Take this microphone off. I'm, I'm leaving. I'm done. I'm really, I'm done with the industry. I'm leaving you. I'm leaving the show because I'm so, so fed up with watch brands employing influencers to sell their watches. Don't leave just yet. Give me like 10 minutes. Okay. I feel like there are ways that brands have done in the past that it's worked before that focus more on products versus personality. Mm -hmm. They can spend the money a little bit better and I think there's actually like a big way to reframe the way we think about the big names in the watch industry. Fully agree. So let's get into it. This is Grand Complications taking on the trickier subjects of the watch world. He's Thomas Hendricks. And this is Balish Frenzy. Let's dive in. So if you look at the watch landscape, what brands do, how to market the watches, it's a lot of money that's spent on people trying to sell you the product instead of watch brands trying to sell you the products themselves. So they spend the money on an influencer mm -hmm. and they make you want to buy the watch because of that person wears it rather than because of what the product is. So yeah, so we can consider, I guess maybe there's two groups, right? You have celebrity mm -hmm. ambassadors and then you have influencers. I guess celebrity ambassadors are better maybe a teeny tiny bit better mm -hmm. because at least those people have achieved something versus a classical influencer where it's just a pretty face on social media. Often it feels forced and not really genuine. Paid for. And Well, yeah. paid for, yeah. It's yeah, you're buying, eyeballs and, you're buying eyeballs instead of putting that money into making a better watch. Yeah. For example, a watch that speaks for itself. I think if you looked at the car industry, we were talking about BMW, mm -hmm. for example, you know, how would you compare the way watch brands pitch their products versus that? Right. I mean, you want to buy a BMW because that's the fuel consumption, that's the speed, that's the, the size. And, and you don't know actually who's driving that car. Yes, you may have an A-lister in an advertisement every once in a while, but it's purely about the product. Yeah. You want this that's product. That's not the central focus of the marketing machine. Absolutely. Whereas oftentimes what we see in the watch industry is there's a watch. We made that watch, but look who's wearing it. And you should get it because that person is wearing the watch. But you don't really know anything about the product itself. The magazine ad with a celebrity doing one of these kind of things or putting it on the red carpet, for example. And you have to wonder like how much money is going into this sort of thing. And I feel like there are other notable names that you could be teaming up with in a more productive way. I think the main example of this is brands teaming up with notable artists and designers of mm -hmm. their day. They stick around a little bit more because the watches outlive the ad campaigns, for example. So you have, you know, really cool stuff like the Tato Ando, Volgarato Finissimos, you have the Giorgetto Se Giugiaro Seiko. Seikos. Yep. Uh, you have Mark Newsom stuff as Mark well. Mark Newsom's Equipod. You have um, in the 70s, I think you had the Lip Mark 2000, which was designed by Roger Talon. Yeah, Andrew Grima and Omega, Serge Manzon. Great example. And Longines. You have, you have a lot of that stuff, and as you said, in five years, who will remember which ambassador or which celebrity or which uh, influencer promoted the watch? Nobody, but the watch will still be there. And I think there's one industry that we don't always like to talk about that does a very good job of blending product and personality, and that's the fashion industry, for example. And I say this because, look at like major headlines, it's a lot of creative directors mm -hmm. moving around. It's like, okay, Tom Ford's going to Gucci. Pharrell is going to Louis, Louis Vuitton. Vuitton, although it's like, we don't agree with that, but we have an opinion on it. Yeah. And these are the kind of things we remember. And you have this collection of superstar designers, creative directors that are moving around. And I think what that does is not only create PR headlines, which every brand needs, it's also from a consumer's perspective, you're like, okay, I want to pay attention to this brand. I want to see what they come out with in the next year because I like this person's vision, not just their face or what movie they've been in. I like the narratives that they tell through products and I wanna see how that blends in with this heritage brand maison. Yeah, and, in, and if you think about that Tom Ford is a great example, right? Because Tom Ford was or is a fashion designer, so that's basically his job, that's his, his trade. And he Whereas, got so good at it that and, he's famous. Yeah, yeah, and he's very good now. He has his own brand, but he was working with big houses, big maisons before. But Pharrell, he's a music producer. Of course, he's, he's many other things, but I guess first and foremost, he's just super creative. And that's yeah. what Louis Vuitton needed. 
Now, I think it's a bit of a bold move. I'm not sure it's the core audience, but definitely a, a big segment of the audience who don't know Pharaoh because maybe in a different age group or a different style, different background, it could be kind of alienating, like who is this guy? Yeah. And well, the criticism is that, okay, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. He's, he's a celebrity first and a designer second. Sure, but he's a celebrity because he's a, as I said, he's a very famous music producer, so he's super creative yeah. and him, collaborating with the brand could open the brand to a larger audience. So you may lose those people, but you may you know, gain so much more than that. And he is a creative guy. He's not just a pretty face, as I said, and an Instagram yeah. account. There's so much potential for the watch industry to take this model and adapt it to their own purposes. The criticism that you'll hear is a lot of brands like just want to make it anonymous and all about the brand and not have a face to who designed mm -hmm. the watch. But you have these crossover examples where it's like, okay, a brand is working with Kari Vutalainen. That's cool. I want to pay attention to that. Or they bring in... Um, or, or they worked with Gerald Genta 40 years ago. Exactly. Yeah. Like, where are the new Gerald Gentas, I think, is the big question. Yeah. But they are, they are out there. There are, there are a few. There yeah. are quite a few. Yeah. If you think of Bulgari, mm -hmm. Fabrizio Bunamassa, yep. he is... I Fabrizio think, Bunamassa Stiviani. There you go. You heard it first. Bulgari does a great job promoting him as a designer or as yes. the designer, yes. right? And if you, as you said, if you think about the industry, you don't really see a lot of brands doing it. But Bulgari does. And is it hurting the brand? I don't think so. No. On the contrary, you have a CEO in certain events, he's there. In certain events, Fabrizio is there. Certain events, both of them are there. It just actually expands the possibilities that the, how the brand can connect to the audience. Also. As a journalist, you talk differently to a CEO than you talk to a designer. Yeah. So it kind of, again, blends these two worlds together, having other people than just a CEO and specifically a designer who is, well, that's my baby. That's what I created and I'm super proud of it. Yeah, I think we look back now, like as, you know, at auction houses, you talk about like Daniel Roth era Breguet. And I think there's more opportunities for brands to pull back the curtain and celebrate the people that are making these designs and if you do that enough then you have the cool thing of like you know kind of like a sports thing where it's like uh star players traded to other teams and things like that it makes it gets more excitement for the industry or if you're an f1 fan it's like drivers moving from this team to this team i think if you have talent you should celebrate it that creates headlines and if you do it right and you attract the right talent then you have consumers that are more excited about your brand for more substantive reasons than whatever influence you're writing a check to this month. Yeah, I think that the sports uh, example is a great analogy, right? Because you have star players who you could see when they moved from team to team, the team did not just become better, they actually won championships. Tom Brady, LeBron James, who's been to like three different teams. So I guess that's like the, the, the designer is kind of the player, whereas the CEO is kind of the coach. We have seen star CEOs, which I hate that term, moving around in the industry and kind of revitalizing the, the new company. I think there are positive examples and maybe less than positive examples. We love Jean-Claude Bivet, for example. Like, he was, yeah, he was yeah. like, he was a super energetic, he is a super energetic person. Um, or George Kern with IWC and now with, with Breitling. Yeah, exactly. And like the story of Blancpain, the story of like Hublot, yeah. for example, wouldn't be the same without Jean-Claude Bivet. Yeah. If the board was just like, no, you sit back at your desk and we won't talk about you, then it's like you lose so much marketing gold because yeah. of that. But that's still difficult because they are the CEOs. They cannot always be everywhere. Sure, yeah. Not every businessman is a presenter. Right. Say, a businesswoman. But then you also have guys like David Acerato, who was yeah. with Tudor. Yep. Um, he did a lot of cool stuff with Tudor, yeah. Black Bay. Then he was with HYT, mm -hmm. now he's with Bremont. He was a CEO slash designer, but I guess he's a designer first and foremost, and then a CEO. And I think the cool part of that is he's a free agent, and I think brands should spend more time, more money, more effort on personalities that productively translate into new products. Oh, it's beautiful. Well said, my friend. I've been thinking about this for so long. Let's call it a day. This has been Grand Complications with Baj Forenzi and Thomas Hendricks. We'll have more episodes coming soon, so stay tuned.